Come on, Duncan, I told you before. You can't stay here. Come on. Thank you, Father. If a stranger sojourn with thee in thy land, I shall not vex him. Leviticus 1933. You care. Get away. I was just trying to help. You just leave me alone. All right. Get yourself. Dixie. Don't leave me alone. Right. Cheerful chappy, aren't you? This looks nasty. How did it happen? By a stretch. It's just a trolley. To help the others first. Right, right. I'm glad we cleared that one up. Jeff, you know, a bit of help here. One go and miss. Can you tell me your name, sweetheart? Duncan. Found this tobacco tin this morning. The accident, half a mile away, three people injured. Ring any bells? Ding, ding. Right, Duncan. Right, this is Duncan Jessup, age unknown. He was found propping up a headstone in the cemetery. I don't think there was any medical history. He's obviously normal. He's got a shard of glass in his hip. Ah, get me a, a, a litre of crust away. <laughs> right, uh, ah. just come with me. No, 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 no. no, no. With me, please. I'll sit back in a chair, Duncan. It's not a little bit easier, isn't it? Um, bearded fart, about yay high, seven sheets of the wind, stinks of pee. Seen him? No, obviously not. I recognise you from somewhere. What's the matter? Nothing. I used to look after a platoon of boys not much older than you. I can smell fear a mile off. You were a soldier? <laughs> you, uh... You got any medals? Would that impress you? Bit of silver and a ribbon. Bravery's not something you show, son. Something you hide inside. So, have you ever killed anyone? I've watched kids die. I've 
held her hands when half their chests were missing and I, and I promised them everything was going to be okay. Nothing brave about it, son. Nothing heroic. It's just ugly. Ugly and pointless. Look at me now, eh? Prison would be a blessing. Prison? At least I'd be warm. I'm gonna be hungry. Don't you have my patient to find? Your X-rays, Doctor? Right. Ah, the uh, wanderer returns. Mr. Jessup, you really shouldn't be up in the back. You know, there is a toilet just round the corner, or we could ask somebody for a bottle, vaulting man. Could we get him 20 milligrams of Claudia's epoxide and a couple of vials of Pabronex, please? Yeah, keep me here. Regrettably, we have to. It's called a duty of care. Do you care, Once we've ass? established how deeply the glass has penetrated, we can stitch you up and get you out of here, assuming you don't have any other injuries. <laughs> Take that as a no. Thank you. Ooh, that's deep. There's no way his urinary tract could have survived that. There's nothing like it. Old bloke must be incontinent. What the hell happened to him? Medical accident? Drunk and fell out of a window? I'm guessing you don't ski. No time. Not with all the golf and recreational yachting. Uh, excuse me, Doc. Sorry, the uh, the police are here. Send them in. Uh, they'll have to wait. I'm doing important medical stuff. Stuff? Yes, stuff. Oh, there you are. Um, oh, and also, Mr Jessup's ex-wife is here. Well, when I say here, she's... Um, I left a message for you earlier. I'm your husband's doctor. What happened to him? Landmine. Helmand Province. I should have thought of that. Captain, 2nd Battalion, Princess of Wales, Royal Regiment. Right. Um, well, as you were. Um, actually, not as you were. You can't park here. Is he going to die? Not today, but if he carries on drinking. Well, that's not my problem anymore. If I'd known for worse meant three bottles of whiskey a day and trying to strangle me in my sleep, well, I never would have married him in the first place. Why did you turn up? I thought he might have changed. Should have known better. Uh, Doc. Doc. Huh? Um, go and get some help, Mac. We need a trolley. Rory will need to go down to the station to make a formal statement. Will they press charges? It's a very serious offence. I just don't understand why he would do something like that. I mean, he, he's a good kid, really. He doesn't belong in prison. Oh, that's what I thought. So I've asked someone from CAMS to come and review him. CAMS? It's Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services. I think it's possible that Rory might be suffering from something called Hero Syndrome. He's starting fires so he can then take the credit for rescuing people. Now, the good news is, if we can prove he has a psychological condition, then the police are less likely to press charges. So, it's an attention-seeking thing? Um, I think your new relationship might have been the trigger. But look, subconsciously, he is just trying to rescue his dad. No. No, that can't be right. His dad didn't die. He left us for another woman. But... Rory couldn't accept it. He... He made up a story about how his daddy died a hero. Repeated it over and over. 
till it got to the point where I didn't have the heart to correct him anymore. Your blood pressure's a bit on the low side. But that's to be expected now we've dealt with your pain. Bad day. At least I didn't drive through a billboard. You look tired. Just try and get some sleep. I need to try and feed him again. Do you want me to call a midwife here? Are you sure there's no one else I can ring for you? Oh, God, no. We separated before I even knew I was pregnant. It's just my fingers swelled up so much I can't get it off. Oh, no, so I'm so sorry. Please. It's um, my version of Mitsuku Kyo. Do you know? It's a Japanese thing. Mitsuku means a uh, water child or oh, miscarried baby. People say I can't have lost them because they were never really mine. Mass effect yet, but the neurosurgeons will need to see him. He may need that drain sooner rather than later. How far the mighty have fallen. That explains his fitting anyway. I've spoken to maternity. April? April? Can I get some help in here? Fairly responsive and tachycardia with a pulse of about 120. April, can you hear me? It could be a bleed from the trauma. She was fine when we assessed her, though, so. Um, where's the baby? Yeah. Okay. Let's get her to recess. Um, can you page Mr. Jordan, please? Where's her baby? I took him up to maternity. There were no other injuries when you did the primary survey. She seemed fine. April, April, can you hear me? Check her pupils, please, Tess. April, squeeze my fingers for me. Squeeze them. Pupils, people reacting normally. Good. Good breath sounds throughout. What are the robs? Plus 120, regular BP 80 over 55. There's no major bleeding. There's no sign of a major head trauma. What's going on here? BM's only three. April, have you had anything to eat today? No. OK, let's give her 250 mils of 10% dextrose, please. Hypoglycemia wouldn't explain a collapse with hypertension. What else do we know about her? Hmm? Come on, people. She seemed stressed. Yeah, about feeding the baby. Right, we do this again and we do it properly. If there's no improvement, we have no option but to run her through the CT scan. Then to phone maternity, check her birth history, and let them know that the baby might be staying a little while longer. Get me the fast scanner, please. April. So you took the baby to maternity, did you? What was I supposed to say? Mummy stole them to arm you up? Keys are missing. I've got to get back. Five minutes, then, if Mr. Jordan asks, I'm telling him. Jeff! Jeffrey, could you with a hand here, please, mate? Stay there. Running all the way. Don't talk 
about Dad. Rory, stop. Rory, stop. Rory, get away. Rory, I want to help you. But I need you to calm down. I just want my dad. I know, but just think about it like this. Robbie Keane, OK? He, he was your best player, wasn't he? But the club is always bigger than one man. But then suddenly, he leaves you, and he goes to play for Liverpool. And in doing so, everyone then forgot about the players that mattered. And then it was up to them to pick up the pieces. You see, now, my point is, Rory, your mum, she may not always win the cup, but she will always be with you. Am I supposed to be the club? Yeah. Lady Gaga, Duchess of Duna. No! All of the above. No, they're all too skinny. Well, you know, a few bacon sarnies. It's the trouble, you women. Too fussy. something that belongs to you. pH 7.1, base excess minus 10, bicarbonate 15. Lactate 5, metabolic acidosis, hypovolemia. No free fluid on the fast, no pneumothorax. Perhaps something went wrong with the procedure. No, no, no. Local anaesthetic toxicity wouldn't present like this. Tess, what did maternity say? Where is Linda? Um, she got called away by Dr. Keogh. Oh, charming. I spoke to maternity, though. Apparently there was quite a bit of bleeding after the delivery, but otherwise normal. Right. Sodium low, 124. Potassium is a bit high. Hypoglycemia. Should I be contacting CT? So she bled heavily at childbirth. And she's had trouble feeding her baby. April, has your baby lost weight? I can check out. Several ounces. This isn't the trauma. This is Sheehan's. Addison's secondary to Sheehan syndrome. April, listen. Because you bled heavily when you gave birth, there was a restricted blood flow to a gland in your brain called the pituitary, which means you haven't been producing enough hormone. Which is why you were struggling to produce enough breast milk. Today's trauma meant the body was struggling to cope which caused the collapse. So it's not my fault? No, it's not your fault. Let's give her 200 milligrams of hydrocortisone, continue with the IV fluids. She'll need a thyroxine replacement, and you better get on to intensive care. Right, April. We'll have to keep you in, though, for a while, and you will have to use formulated milk to feed your baby. But apart from that, you'll be fine. I don't care what you say. I'm not giving him back. But he's hungry. We should take him back inside and get him something to eat. We're not going anywhere with you. It's OK. You're safe now. I'll look after you and get a job. And you, me and Joe, we'll go to the zoo and eat ice cream and do all the stuff normal families do. No one on the hairs us ever again. You make it look so easy. It's not hard. You just cuddle them. You know, when you were that size, your mum couldn't put you down without you crying. She used to have to sleep sitting up with you tucked under her armpit. Looked so uncomfortable, but it never bothered her. That was the happiest I'd ever seen her. Well, why did she leave us? But I know that this baby's mum doesn't want to leave him. And if little Jack could talk, he'd want to be with his mum, wouldn't he? When can I see my baby? Soon, definitely. Ah, Captain Jessup, I'm glad you could join us. Um, Has she gone? I think so, sir. 
I'm afraid you've a bleed on your brain, so we're going to have to admit you. Well, if there are no further questions. Sorry, uh, someone here to see you. Thank you. Two years, and I don't hear a thing. And we sat out there in the car trying to think of three good reasons why I shouldn't just drive off. I couldn't think of any. I wrote to you. What? I wrote to you every day. I didn't receive any letters. I never sent them. So where are they now, these letters? They were in my trolley. I think I set fire to them. It's all yours. Poppins? What's that? Quinoa, butternut squash, an alfalfa salad with a drizzle of balsamic and pomegranate molasses. Mm. How's your tramp? Uh, he's an ex-serviceman, actually. You know, it wasn't his fault. What wasn't? The accident this morning it was my patient that set fire to the trolley. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. News, Krusty. The crash wasn't your fault. Did you hear what I said? I stepped in a landmine, but because it was laid by the Soviets and not the Taliban, I wasn't entitled to any compensation. I stopped believing in justice a long time ago. So you're planning to rot in jail with a big beard in a pool of your own urine? Aye. Right. Well, you might have to reappraise that remarkably aspirational life plan because a young boy has already come forward and taken the rap. Okay. You trod on a landmine. Boo hoo. You're still alive. I could organise for urology to come and see you after the neurosurgeons have reviewed you. I could fix you up with a long term catheter. I could refer you to our chronic pain management team or try to find you a place in a homeless shelter. I could, in short, assist you on the road to recovery. But I don't want to waste my time. For reasons I can't fathom, your wife still seems to harbour feelings for you. Don't you think it's about time you stopped feeling sorry for yourself and started thinking of others for a change? You said earlier about me being too harsh on the kids. Well, you were right. And... Apology accepted. To be honest, whilst we're at it, I should. Apology accepted. Where are they anyway? Big Max taking them on a tour of the morgue. Genius. What was it like? Growing up in care? There's no Aunt May or Uncle Ben. Darling Tiggy Winkle. Leg hurts this morning, and I think I might have mice in my beard. Do hedgehogs do hedgehogs live near the sea? 
tell Marmot that this really is our time to be together. I never stop loving you. He gave it to me this morning. It's not exactly Wilfred Owen, but you get the gist. waiting for a bed and then you'll be moved up to maternity. The medics agreed to look after you both there. How are you feeling? I'm so terrified I'm gonna do something wrong. And that he's gonna be taken away from me. Well, he's here. And you're the best mum he's ever had. Do you not have any children? No. And the mummy's going to have to start looking after herself, isn't she? Because right now, I'm all you've got. With handwriting like that, you'll be after my job. You see the urologist and keep your appointments. You go to AA, counselling, whatever the hell they offer you. Get yourself a place in sheltered housing. Have a shave and a shower. And then write to me every day and post the goddamn letters. In a month, come and find me. Then we'll talk. This is a message for Stephanie Luscow. It's Linda Andrews here. I'm going to need some help, but the answer is yes. If they want to, the kids can stay with me. A hidden secret and an unexpected reunion for Stephen and Isabel. Birdsong concludes tomorrow night at nine. Breaking into Alcatraz, Sean Connery and Nicolas Cage are taking no prisoners. The Rock follows the news at 9.50 here on BBC One.